So the internet, and more specifically X, formerly known as Twitter, are ablaze talking about the Zuhai Air Show, which this air show has had a lot of prototypes, including the Su-57 for the first time and the J-35 or J-31. We'll talk about that in a second, but first, a lot of people are looking into the Su-57 that showed up. And remember, I did a video several years ago during COVID about the Su-57 and the air show. It was one of many prototypes, but there were few operational aircraft. And when I talked about operational, the definition being uh, serialized production aircraft that can be used in combat versus a prototype, which build quality may or may not be uh, up to spec because it's a prototype. It's experimental and it's what they're using for developmental test versus operational test. So they sent out a prototype a T-50 that is not serialized production, and the internet's like, wow, this is not so good. So we're going to take a look at an article about that, and then also talk about China's answer to Fat Amy, the F-35. So the Aviationist is one of many reporting that the Su-57 is making its debut at the Chinese air show, offering unprecedented access. Uh, this air show is uh, also known as the China International Aviation Aerospace Exhibition. They sent out the fourth prototype, T-50-4054 Blue, uh, and it landed at a fuel stop after uh, going to another airport. Uh, they also brought a second aircraft that was disassembled in the cargo air aircraft. So they brought spare, obviously, and, and that's typical. We bring spares to air shows. When I've done static displays, I've been there with the demo teams, and the demo teams will sometimes bring a spare because, I mean, the jet breaks, you got to have something, right? You can't just, uh, you know, fly with nothing. And typically, the spare is flown by the announcer, just FYI. Uh, but they did have Dash 4 available to explore, and this is what we see. And you can see here, uh, and a lot of people have commented, a lot of exposed um, rivets, screws, stuff that you're like, man, that doesn't make it very stealthy. Um, and, and some of the panels are even mismatched looking, but it's a good-looking airplane in general. I mean, it looks very you know, durable, Russian. Uh, you can see these uh, leading edge devices here, which gives it that high alpha capability. We'll look at a video of them practicing, which is pretty eye watering. But you can see here people are talking about, I mean, it looks like, it, honestly, it looks like a, a kid aircraft. It looks like some experimental, you know, that somebody glued together. But obviously that is not ideal on a production aircraft, but then this is a prototype. So people are kind of like, oh, well, look at that. It's not, see, the guy even pointed at it. Um, but amazing that they got such close access. You would not get that close of access of an F-22 uh, when it was brand new. I don't know if they do it now, but definitely when it was brand new, you would never see something like that. But they're saying it's not optimized for low observability, poor manufacturing surfaces, gap screws, rivets, clearly visible, not flush with the surface. Uh, I, I, you know, and I agree with this production versus prototypes to me, though, if you're going to the air show to sell it to somebody, you might want to use your, your best and take a production aircraft. Uh, here's another view of it. I mean, that's cool. That's a pretty, I, I, I don't know if it's going through its built in test. Yeah. It looks like it's doing some kind of built in flight control test, uh, which most, you know, fly by wire jets will do. But big honking intakes. So this is what a uh, production aircraft looks like, uh, per the comments, which looks a lot better. Doesn't have the uh, build quality issues. But again, to me, if you're going to an air show to sell or to demonstrate, I would not take my prototype. Uh, here it is, taxiing. Very, uh, very sleek design. You know, I, I mean, yeah, you can see kind of the mismatch panel there, but. You know, from afar, it's really hard to tell. To me, though, you know, one of the things I look at, and I've talked about this before, it looks like visibility is not awesome, but when you've got high angle of attack capability, do you really need great visibility? I don't know. 
Uh, I would prefer something more like an F-16 or a Raptor that doesn't have the canopy bow and it's got better rearward visibility, but um, I'm sure you know it's something that you get used to, especially if you're coming off a Su-30 or Su-35 or something. All right, here's a video of uh, post-stall maneuver, similar to what you saw in Top Gun Maverick. In fact, it's identical to what you saw in Top Gun Maverick. Pretty much, you know, an air show maneuver. Look how smoky those engines are. Again, this is a prototype. I don't know if the production ones are smoky. You don't want smoky engines because obviously it helps with visibility, people being able to spot you. But that is a very Russian thing to have dirty engines that uh, smoke. But high angle attack, you saw the leading edge devices that can maneuver to help with that high AOA. Uh, something like this, would it be useful? I mean, Gonkey's talked about it, has, having fought the Su-30 that it is. Um, I think it's something that you, you know, if you're not ready for, can surprise you. But if you are able to manage it, you should still be able to get at least a missile shot out of it. Uh, we talked about it in Top Gun Maverick, where it's like, hey, thanks for doing that. Box 2, you're dead. But here you go. This is identical to Top Gun Maverick. So kudos to Top Gun Maverick for getting it right because this is exactly how it is. Um, the the thing I have a problem with is, you know, how much of this, uh, what is the recovery period? You know, are you, once you do this post stall, how long are you in the post stall before you can fly out? Because it doesn't do much good for you if you're doing multiple iterations, you know, once they fly by because now, you know, you're 180 out and you're still gyrating through the air. But if you can get a lot of control here and get the nose around, then it actually is a pretty useful maneuver, especially when you're talking high off bore sight capability, missiles, stuff like that. We don't really talk about guns because, you know, I mean, we're really talking about the missile defense and stuff like that. The demo itself, I mean, it's a really, really good demo. Um, you know, there's the Top Gun Maverick thing we were just talking about, which is kind of eye-watering, cool to see. Um, you know, the fact that it's got that high alpha capability. But, and then landing, holy crap. I mean, look at that. That final turn is like wrapped up like a big dog. You know, that's a impressive final turn straight to land and then right on the captain's bars. Um, interesting, doesn't really seem to have any kind of leading edge flaps or trailing edge flaps that are down. Doesn't seem to need them. Uh, so, you know, it manages that and then it does have a look like, yeah, it does have a, a, a shoot for, uh, to help with the braking. So, and then here is the, uh, J twenties look like catfish. Um, they're not bad looking, not bad looking at all. Very formidable. Probably I would say a little bit farther along than the Su-57, but uh, the Su-57 is obviously being used. There was another article. So this uh, National Interest article, which sometimes they're accurate, sometimes not so much, uh, has said that they are currently 10 felons in service with 75 airframes on order. And then here also is the short takeoff of the Su-57. Which again, you know, doesn't seem to need leading edge or trailing edge devices, which, okay. I mean, why would it? Thrust. In thrust, we trust. If you got enough thrust, you can make anything fly fast and in a hurry. And that's a pretty lightweight uh, air show configuration as well. So we also got some images of the Chinese J-35, which is not supposed to be an F-35, allegedly. But uh, as you can see, it's twin engine. Uh, they've got the uh, naval variant and the Air Force variant looks a lot like an F-35, but honestly, it looks better. And you know why it looks better? Because it's not obese. It did not create Fat Amy in their version because it did not require a lifting fan. So it doesn't need the big hump, didn't need to stay modular. This is what the F-35 should have been. The B model is the problem. That's why it's Fat Amy, because it's an ugly airplane with all the lifting fan crap. Even when you take the lifting fan stuff out, the, they still had to keep it modular and kind of keep the basic parts together to have one joint strike fighter. But 
when you take that away and put two engines in it, this is what you get. And it looks a lot better. It's a much better looking airplane. But uh, you can see here, you know, it's, it's got very similar sensors to the F-35, center, similar canopy, fifth gen, um, low observable technology. Uh, the F-35 or the J-35 has the folding wings just like the F-35C carrier variant. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, there's the J-35. Looks so much like an F-35, especially up front. But um, two engines. Yeah, I mean, that silhouette looks exactly like an F-35. I mean... Yeah, good thing uh, they're not stealing anything, right? Just a cool shot. Good on these guys for great pictures. All right, so what did we learn? Well, um, Chinese social media is brutal. They've been making fun of the Su-57 and its rivets and screws and panels that are poorly aligned. Um, not sure why you'd send a prototype, but... I mean, I get it. You're busy in war, so you know you need to keep all your assets um, being used. But maybe if you did that, maybe do a better job of keeping people away. I'm actually really surprised that people got as close as they did because in you know most air shows, security contingent will keep people from taking pictures that close. But as you can see, I think it's just a prototype. I don't think that the real production ones are that bad. Um, so I think. You know, it kind of dispels the whole, well, it's not stealth. Yeah, it might be. I mean, it, that particular one might not have a very good radar cross-section, but the actual aircraft itself, I mean, you know, if you're using the correct paint and uh, materials and stuff, mm, yeah, it's not an F-22, obviously, but it's got all the sensors and all the high alpha capability. We, we really don't know the guts of it and what, the classified capabilities are going to be. And, you know, we never talk about that on this channel anyway, but I think there's probably more to it than just, you know, air show stuff. Uh, but the air show stuff is cool. As far as the uh, J35 slash 31, um, God, it looks exactly like Fat Amy, except for it looks better, right? And I think it fixes, you know, Gonky would complain, hey, you know, I, he likes two engines, which naval variant now, you got two engines. So that's probably a better design uh, for carrier operations um you get rid of the bulbous you know back to support the stovel version that we have and it's actually a much better looking airplane but uh, yeah as far as capabilities go we don't know that's something that we'll find out uh, down the road but they've also unveiled some long-range missiles that'll also be a threat china's a threat i mean there's no no question about it don't underestimate estimate your enemies russia's a threat too but china is a very big near peer adversary that we cannot take lightly because they have uh, very good capabilities and they've got a good espionage program that has taken a lot of uh, other stuff and integrated it into their equipment and they've tried to make it better. So uh, definitely something that you got to watch out for and be careful of. Anyway, as I know you always will, let me know in the comments what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.